In the last episode, we finished plundering the nearby city for tons of loot. We picked up an extra hauler bot, which can help us haul stuff around the base, as well as a cleaner bot, which will clean stuff for us. We can't currently use them though, because our wood fire generator is over capacity, and like we don't even have enough power to power some of these lights. So before we set them up, we need to improve our power supply. However, I don't want to build another wood fire generator, as those consume a lot of wood. I'd rather start using wind power, although the problem with wind power is it's not too reliable. Sometimes the winds will be blowing super hard, and other times they just won't be blowing at all. In order to fix that problem, we're having Frodo research battery, and he's actually not bad at researching. He's got eight intellectual. We're about halfway done, and once he's done with that, we can get the wind power up and running. In the meantime, we got a few pretty high value items that are just raising the wealth of our base, which is just going to make it so we are raided by stronger enemies. This artifact sword, the war god, has a market value of 4,600, as well as this charge minigun has a market value of 3,275. The charge minigun is a relatively decent weapon, as it has a really large burst shot count, but it's not very accurate. It's got a long cooldown, long warm up time and in general it's just not my favorite weapon to use. We also have three nanite vials which have a market value of 3500. We're going to bring those and we're going to check back in on some of our neighbors to see if their stocks have replenished with new goods. At Gavexa they don't really have any goods we need however they do have a human chef aptly named Stench. I don't know if I'd want Stench cooking my food. He has a decent cooking skill at 10 and a minor passion for it although he is lazy so he does cook a bit slower. However he does have this trait Wayfarer. He's a self-disciplined fighter that excels at tricks and dirty fighting. Also also, he prefers the open road, and any caravan he travels with will travel 25% faster. I was kind of torn on whether or not to pick him up for 800 bucks, so I went to the nearby dwarven colony of Gabalol and checked him out, and they didn't really have anything. I then sent Legolas home and kind of contemplated for a while if we do want stench or not, and came to the conclusion that yes, indeed, we do want stench. So I came back for him later on in the episode and picked him up, and we're just going to buy this guy outright with silver. We're not going to use our nanite vials, which do have a selling value of nearly 1800 silver. One thing I also didn't like about stench is that he has a stab scar on his right leg so he does move a bit slower he only moves at 89 percent speed so i was thinking if he is on our caravans he might just end up slowing us down but i don't think this matters as much if he has a mount and once we have someone that's decent at medical we can always remove that leg and replace it with a bionic one later on a person living among wild animals has wandered into the area. You can attempt to tame or arrest her. Hernandez does have a minor passion for crafting, and I guess we could always use another crafter. She's also hardworking, so she works quicker, and very neurotic makes her work even quicker, but she does get an extra 14% mental break threshold, which makes it so she'll have mental breakdowns a lot easier. And yeah, if we look at her mood meter, anything below 49% makes it so she has a chance to have a mental breakdown. Apparently, in order to tame Hernandez, we need a level 6 taming skill, and Jambo is actually working on that she's got a five taming skill and it looks like she just tamed a royal ave which I've been having her tame animals that have a pretty low handling skill. But yeah, the Ave is an awesome animal, and it can move really quickly when used as a mount. We just gotta train its obedience up, which shouldn't be too hard. And yeah, to train the obedience on the Ave, there's a 37% chance per, and first time Jambo tried it, she got it. She only needs to do that two more times, and Legolas can use it as a mount. Holy cow, 13% chance, and Jambo got the tame on the Brontosaurus, which does have a handling skill of five. That was really good that she got that. Brontosauruses do eat quite a lot. They have the highest food meter I've ever seen. And unfortunately, they are not pack animals, nor are they very quick with a 4.5 movement speed. However, they're really tanky, and we can use them as combat mounts when we're getting attacked. And we can also breed them. We picked up a male Brontosaurus, and there's also a female one, who, by the way, is about to hatch another Brontosaurus egg. And this female is as well. It'd be really nice to tame both these females so we can end up breeding them. And if we do breed them, we can use them as mounts. We can sell them. They have a market value of 2100. Or we can slaughter them for their massive amounts of meat and leather. We ended up researching battery and built four batteries and two wind turbines. I feel like this is going to be enough now so that we can finally deconstruct this wood fire generator, which is constantly eating through our very lacking wood supply. The wind turbines cannot have any large structures in front or behind them, so I set them up in such a way that they are facing each other, but they're not quite touching, and they do have adequate space behind them and in front of them. The four battery setup should hopefully be enough, assuming we do get enough wind, like right now there is no wind, so if we had no batteries, we'd be completely out of power, at least until the wind does pick back up. And yeah, we finally got the cleaning bot set up, which is now just going around our base, cleaning stuff up. Super nice thing to have, and these prisoners are really going to appreciate it as they have a very dirty prison cell. I don't think you need a higher tier cleaning bot either, like a tier 1 cleaning bot seems like it should do the job. 
because it doesn't need any type of cleaning skill or anything. It just needs to go around and clean stuff. Earlier on in the episode, I talked about how we picked up Stench later on in the episode, which is right now we just got him back to base. And he currently has Ratty Apparel, which is giving him a Moodle debuff, as well as I was not paying attention. And apparently he had to sleep outside in the cold because apparently it's cold out, even though it's the desert, winter in the desert. And yeah, actually the desert is quite cold in the winter. I know firsthand as it's currently winter in Vegas and it's pretty hard to go outside right now without a coat on. He also slept on the ground and he's chilly and we're currently in the process of building him a bed. And he's always going to have this negative five minor pain moodlet debuff because of the fact that he is injured on his leg. He has the stab scar, which is not going to go away until we can amputate it. So that is kind of annoying, but overall we should be able to manage his mood okay. The first negative moodlet we can easily get rid of is Ratty Apparel and we're just going to have him dump his Wildebeest Pelt Blouse. I thought blouses were for women. And we'll have him take off his pants as Crafterbot is making him a night leather tribal wear, which Crafterbot does have 20 crafting, so there's a pretty good chance this is going to be a really good quality one. 50% chance for excellent, 37% chance for good, and 9.5 that it's masterwork. And he got the Masterwork modifier. We're going to give the Masterwork Tribal Wear to Legolas as he can wear that under his power armor. And that will increase his armor. And we'll give Legolas' old one to Stench. Legolas' old Tribal Wear was giving him 13.4% protection to his torso and his legs. But his new Night Leather Masterwork one is giving him 37.7, which is quite a considerable increase. That increase is due to the fact that it is Masterwork. And Night Leather is much more tanky than Birdskin. It gives 130% armor and a good amount of insulation as well. And we just got a psychic ship event. The psychic ship event sends the ship part into our territory, and it's now projecting a low psychic drone on everyone for a negative 12 moodle debuff. If we don't take it out, over time this is going to get worse, and so we're going to take it out ASAP. Now, based on our wealth, I'm kind of worried what's inside this. It's going to be mechanoids, I think, and I'm not sure what kind of mechanoids are going to be inside. Thankfully, we do have the Atlas sniper rifle with 45 range, so we should be able to outrange whatever is inside this thing. Oh, and there we go. They have, holy cow, charge lances, a centipede, a scyther, which is injured. I guess we tagged that thing already. Some scully wags, which do appear to be melee. The only range they have is the centipede with a eh, relatively decent amount of range. And the lancers have a really good amount of range with their charge lance sniper rifles. Legolas does outrange them though. And so we're just going to kite these lancers and take them out slowly and good tag on that lancer. Good tag on that Lancer too. I probably shouldn't have kited these things towards the base because yeah, it looks like that Scyther is now heading for the base. It, it's going in the base. We just use anti-armor on the Scullywag and it pretty much one shot it, I think. Which by the way, I haven't talked about Legolas' skills for quite some time. We ended up getting him three out of three in sniper training. So he has a bunch of nice bonus stats for that. More accuracy, less aiming delay, and more movement speed. We have four skill points available and we're gonna start investing points into anti-armor. If we put three points into reduced stamina cost of anti-armor, we can get its stamina cost down from 30 to 21 and the reason why i like this skill is because it only has a cooldown of 10 seconds whereas headshot and disabling shot both have a cooldown of 45 anti-armor is really good against mechanoids it does 21 plus an additional 42 to mechanoids and every time we use any of our skills we get more experience which i actually don't think that goes up when he does shoot i think it's only from using his skills since we lowered the stamina cost on this ability now we can use it more often which will generate us more xp and it's really good late game when we start fighting a lot of mechanoids like we can give it explosive rounds which will make it explode damaging nearby mechanoids or other enemies and then we can also increase its damage for now we're just gonna have Legolas kite whatever's on him south and there is some visitors from northern Butlam down here which they're gonna run right into these mechanoids and the mechanoids might actually knock some of them out or kill them even so we're hopefully gonna get some help with that in the meantime we do have a scyther breaching our base and Frodo it looks like is trying to hold him off it looks like with his low accuracy he already damaged our wall and I think we're just gonna have Frodo chill for a bit and we'll try to use Frodo as a last resort because his ring does do splash damage and yeah it just damaged our embrasure i put everyone in the back here and oh jambo hit his first shot or her first shot and yeah the minigun not very accurate of a weapon but it looks like we're gonna be able to shred this scyther as he gets closer scale in the wall what is that giraffe doing dude the giraffe's body blocking for the scyther. I think it might be in cahoots with it. And we'll have Stench and Jambo back off a little bit. I don't think we can take both of them at once. Outlanders from Northern Butlam are fleeing. Ooh, it looks like two of them got taken out already. And they had some fine meals. Six of them. Very nice. As well as a Jade Axe. This thing gives a bonus to plant work speed. So Jambo's going to enjoy that. Assuming we do survive this mechanoid raid, that is. We're going to Frodo melee down this scyther, which is pretty injured. It's not going to take many more hits. Seeing as Frodo does have the legendary ring, and he does really good damage in melee with it. 
12, although the Scyther did 17.25 to Frodo. Ouch. Maybe everyone should be mailing it. Yeah, we probably shouldn't have Frodo be the only one trying to take this thing out. Everyone surround it. Get it. Okay, we got it. Frodo got a stab on his left leg and a crack on his femur. And apparently he had a stab scar on his left arm. I didn't even know about that. In the meantime, Legolas took care of the rest of the mechanoids, and now he's taking on the centipede. She's doing a good job of tagging it. And apparently it's stunned. I guess anti-armor stuns it. Holy cow, it's stunned for a while. Its range is pretty small, so Legolas will be completely fine, and he'll be able to just take it out. We cleared out all the mechanoids, and now we gotta finish off this ship part. And so we just gave Legolas the charge minigun, Bring it right up next to this thing, and we're just gonna unload on it. How are you shooting this direction? What? Maybe it just has some insane sway and it's just swinging everywhere as he's shooting. And it dropped a bunch of good stuff, some steel, some plasteel. A lot of this stuff is pretty laking materials and we don't have any use for it right now. As are these mechanoid bodies, we can't do anything with them right now. And this one is seemingly moving on its own, which someone did comment in the last video about how materials were moving on their own. But in reality, the hauling bot is really small. And when it is carrying a lot of stuff, it looks like that stuff is just moving on its own. Holy cow, the brontosaurus consumes trees. That's not good. We don't have enough trees on the map for that thing to be consuming whole trees. We were cutting down trees in order to build a wooden electric tailor bench, which we finally got built. And with that, now we can start making more advanced clothing like this parka. And normally you wouldn't want to be making parkas in the desert because it's usually pretty warm and parkas are only really good in the cold. And holy cow, this thing offers 126 degrees insulation against the cold. That is an insane amount. We put that on stench because we're going to have them cook in the freezer. And by the way, we can be a bit more efficient with this. We made a three tile separate zone and thank you Hollerbots for hauling those meals over there. But he will turn right around, drop the meal, and then he'll only have to go over and grab some rice. But yeah, it is 33 degrees in here, which isn't even freezing anymore. Mainly that's due to the fact that we do have heaters in nearby rooms and we should probably add another airlock just so that we can keep this place freezing. With his new night leather parka, Stench does not mind the freezing and his comfortable temperature range is now negative 70 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 94 degrees Fahrenheit, which I mean, it's never going to get negative 70 in here. So he can pretty much just stay in the refrigerator full time. But yeah, we'll add an airlock to this room and make it a bit smaller. And then we can use this other space for emergency refrigeration just in case we start getting way too much food and we need to refrigerate it quick like if we kill a brontosaurus it might fill up our entire refrigerator with meat also i'm not quite sure how i forgot about this but since we are now cooking in this room we need to make sure it's clean and right now it's dirty because we're cooking over a bunch of soil which means these meals that we just cooked could be contaminated so we're just going to get rid of those meals it's not worth the chance of getting food poisoning we're just going to dump those out in the middle of nowhere and disallow them back to nutrient paste for you guys we finally got the kitchen floored in and we got some meat in here as well so we can cook fine meals which do take a bit longer to cook than simple meals fine meals take eight work whereas simple meals only take five so it doesn't take quite double the amount of time but it is still a lot more time consuming if we have stench only cooking fine meals he might end up falling behind and people might have to start eating nutrient paste again which we want to use that as like a last resort so we can set it up so that stench will cook 10 simple meals and as long as we have 10 simple meals in the fridge he'll then start cooking fine meals and if at any time this meal amount goes below 10 then he will just start cooking simple meals again one thing i am kind of worried about though is stench is incapable of cleaning and like as he cooks he makes kind of a mess there's some sand on the ground which i guess that's not from him i think that's from people coming in and grabbing meals but like even right now the room is dirty and before the cleanliness was zero and so I am worried that someone that eats his meals might end up getting food poisoning. Usually what cooks will do before they start making food is they'll make sure the entire room around them is clean, but Stench can't do that. So what we'll try to do is put a stockpile zone outside of the kitchen, and we'll just have him walk outside and drop meals there. It is a lot less efficient this way, as he has to open the door every time he makes a meal. But I'm already noticing there's a lot less clutter in here, and there's some trash on the ground. Which, like, the cleaning bot will eventually come over here and clean it. But in the meantime, he's cooking meals in a slightly dirty environment. And yeah, like the hauling bot just created a mess as it walked over this tile. Ooh, and Jambo trained up this Ave's obedience and she is riding that thing like a freaking red rocket. I'm not really sure what to do about this problem. I think the only temporary solution is just to make it so Stench only cooks a couple meals. After much deliberation, I think I have found the solution. Under the robots tab, we can restrict where the robots go. And so I made a kitchen zone and we're only gonna allow cleaning bot to go inside this zone, which does seem like kind of a waste 
base and now cleaning bot will no longer be cleaning around the base it will just be in the kitchen full time just waiting for stench to make a mess or someone else to make a mess as they're grabbing a meal or delivering food but what we can do until we get another cleaning bot or until we get a better cook is we can have some of our more useless colonists clean full time after training up the Ave's obedience Jambo immediately went out to try to tame Hernandez which she was successful at and right now Hernandez does have no clothing on does have heat stroke as there's currently a heat wave going on and apparently she had food poisoning before joining us because I guess she was eating a lot of raw meat but like currently we don't have a whole lot of use for her skills like she is pretty good at crafting but right now we can't really make use of her crafting as we don't really have that much tech researched and if we do need to craft anything then crafting bot is all over that with his 20 crafting skill in the meantime though we can just have her clean full time at around the same time of Hernandez joining us we also ended up picking up Mendoza who is sleeping on the ground next to all this filth and Frodo's just enjoying his fine meal which by the way Frodo gets a 10 moodlet buff for eating fine meals and I think it actually does stack we're about to find out after he finishes eating that which is crazy normal colonists only get five for eating fine meals the moodlet buff is nice but Frodo does have to consume fine meals a lot more often and like for example if we run out of fine meals and we have to start eating nutrient paste again that's a huge detriment to his mood so I think that's actually pretty balanced Mendoza is magically gifted and we can turn him into a mage or we can turn him into a wanderer which if we do this he cannot become a mage wanderer pairs really well with Stench's Wayfair as Wayfair does increase caravan movement speed by 25% wanderer on the other hand makes it so caravans ignore movement penalties of any world tile and just like Wayfair if they stay at the colony for too long they will suffer a mood penalty he also gets some extra movement speed and gets less global work speed so he is not as good around camp but he does get extra immunity gain speed so if he gets sick he'll get over that quicker and he has a little bit less mental break threshold which makes it slightly harder for him to have mental breakdowns and that's really nice for people that are constantly running in caravans because as long as not everyone breaks down in the caravan it will keep moving he's also decent at planting so when he's around base he can just help us plant and cut down trees and stuff and he's the first person we have that has a burning passion for social so his second focus is going to be planting and his main focus is going to be recruiting prisoners and that will help him level up his social which now i think about it pairs again perfectly with wanderer because if we do have someone in the caravan with really high social that will improve our trade prices when we do trade with other colonies we would like to have him start recruiting asap except for currently there's a prison break going on which did just start as legolas was doing something in this room i think he was trying to recruit them because now he is fleeing but we're going to put him in a draft mode and we're going to have him drop a disabling shot on macaulay and then we'll have him capture her now i don't know what we're going to do with lewis though i think we'll just surround him with like mendoza and i don't know if we want frodo to hit him holy cow 22 damage to lewis from one hit from mendoza he's got this steel cleaver i think we should have mendoza back off and we'll have leg loss yeah 11 damage is better lewis don't make us kill you come on lewis just go down okay lewis is not going down and apparently he's only bleeding at 68 percent he's not even bleeding that bad we're gonna have leg loss back off and disabling shot is almost back up just gonna try to kite him around in circles here comes jambo with the ave oh there goes jambo she's scared he's trying to melee attack hauling bot three what did hauling bot three ever do to you here we go disabling shot and it missed. I would really have to do this for another 45 seconds. Lewis. I feel like if Hernandez just beats him down, he could just go down. Especially because she's injured. Okay, there we go. Phew. That was like a weird lag spike too. But yeah, even though his HP is really low, he's not even in any danger. He only got a cut on his torso. We'll have Frodo tend to his injuries anyways. And with that, I think we're going to end the episode. In the next one, we're going to be going on trade missions with Legolas, Mendoza, and Stench. And we'll be able to move around the map really quickly, especially because we did tame up that Royal Ave, which we only have one mount. We need three mounts in order to be uber quick on the map. But apparently we did also end up taming this Dio Dicaris, which is a pack animal, although it's really slow. So I don't even know if we're going to take it with us, but it can. And carry goods and we also ended up taming this arthropleura which again is another pack animal and this one's a bit quicker it's 3.5 movement so it might not slow us down if we just have legolas go by himself he travels at 91 tiles per day so we could just have him make a quick run with like these nanite vials and then we could have him take some silver along too although taking all the silver would drastically lower our movement speed maybe we'll take the war god with us and we can get all the way over to this dwarven colony in 0.9 days or all the way over here to henium castle in 0.85 days and they might have some really good stuff to trade us and like i said if we got mendoza that amount we'd go even quicker because he'd boost that by 25 percent and we'll probably try to give him out in the next episode and with that i want to thank you all for watching i will see you in the next one